Hello, it's Elena, and today I would like to talk to you about how to be a better organized creative professional or graphic designer. This video is going to shock the pants off of bosses who I worked for like 10 or 15 years ago, because let me tell you, these are lessons I learned the hard way, and they were very patient. First off, let's start off with the fact that if you're a graphic designer and you're working either in-house or at an agency, you are constantly bombarded with communication. And a lot of those things are asking you to do something. Do something right now, do it this afternoon, I need it by tomorrow morning. All sorts of stuff that you need to keep track of. Sure, many of you may have a project manager, but these tips will help you be respected as an organized and on-point professional, which will help with your career growth as well. And your bosses will love you <laughs> more. So the first tip that I have is always write stuff down. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into meetings with people who just walk in and sit down and have no notepad or journal or anything to keep track of what we're talking about. So I always tell my students and coworkers to have some sort of binder or notepad or journal. It's really best if you keep everything in one book or collection rather than separate notepads scattered all over the place. I used to do that and then I would lose a notepad um, or not be able to flip back through and reference something from a few days before. I know that we work in a digital world. I work primarily in digital design but even so, sometimes you just got to be able to like flip your day out and see what's going on this week. I always keep a notepad for each client. So I have, these are all clients that I work with right now. And each client has their own tab and their own section of notes that are specific to whatever their current project is. And then I keep a calendar with deliverables for the week. I'm not gonna show you really close up to this because it's all just, I don't know, doesn't seem kosher. So I keep a calendar with milestones for each day, what I need to be focused on for that day, what is delivering like Friday. Friday morning, I know that I have a website that has to launch that morning or that I need to QA a site that day whatever, but when I'm sitting in a meeting, I can look at this spread and make commitments to delivering certain things based on knowing what, what all of the other balls are that I have in the air. Tip number two is use flags for your email. If you use Outlook or uh, Gmail or most email clients, there is some way to flag or star a message that you need to circle back to. So if you arrive in the office that morning and you have your big email dump of, you know, some of it's junk mail, some of it's client stuff, some of it's your boss, go through, read it, mark the ones that you need to be able to circle back to, then go through and digest those. Write it down in your notebook about like, um, so-and-so needs these ads delivered by 11 a.m. And then you have you've distilled your email into actionable tasks and just FYI messages. Number three is to use some sort of messaging service like Skype or Google Chat or Google Hangouts or whatever they're using today. Um, make a project-based chat group. Say you're working on something like American Airlines holiday ads. Make a group chat for that. Put everybody in there project manager, your coworkers, anybody who is directly in your sphere of moving through that task. That way, as you guys are bouncing through all of those really granular deliverables, quick copy changes, um, or, hey, do you have this? Or I need this by, you know, two o'clock to deliver that thing. And uh, it's just a really good way to stay in close communication with your team. You should be taking the lead on organizing your professional life and organizing your professional day. And all of these things will help you be a better designer and be beloved by all who work with you. Number four, I rely on project management applications like Rike 
Basecamp, Jira, where you can set milestones for each deliverable. You can look at it, see what's up next, see when that project is due, leave notes for things that need to move the project along. If you're working alone as a freelancer, I still think that you should get into Basecamp. I think it's free up to a certain number of accounts. There are lots of other applications out there that do the same thing, but set them up for yourself. Set up the client's delivery day and be sure to include a QA period and testing period in there and backdate from that to let yourself know how much time you have to achieve each task. I really think this is important for freelancers, especially if you're managing multiple clients. Number five, one of my favorite tips. I used to get into work and sit there for like 15 minutes trying to figure out what should I do? Where should I start? What do I dig into? Where do I get this thing started? And since I started doing this, that doesn't happen anymore. I hit the ground running every day. I take a few minutes at the end of each day, especially on Fridays, and write down a to-do list of what I need to start on tomorrow while it's still fresh in my head. I've moved through my day. I know there are things that I need to jump on as soon as I get in the next morning, and this helps me identify them and pick up right where I left off after I've had an evening of, you know, kids, family, dinner, time with my husband, running errands, whatever, or especially after a weekend or a holiday, to know where to pick up as seamlessly as I can. So hopefully that's a good tip for anybody. I think you'll feel a lot more organized even if you just do this one tip. Number six, use collaborative docs like Google Docs, places where there's a centralized document where other people on your team can go in and you guys can edit at the same time. This is really good for status updates. Say, I know that we have to have this campaign, this campaign, and this campaign done. I know that there were some details about each of those that haven't been completed yet. I can put that Google Doc up and have the people in my team go in and update it live on the fly and have a current, concise, up-to-date status to respond to my leadership and clients with. Number seven, set task reminders for yourself in your email app or on your phone, letting you know there's a deadline this afternoon. Let technology be your personal assistant. Let it tap you on the shoulder and remind you to do things. Huge help, especially if you're keeping track of 20 different projects. Number eight is just to have a process. Understand how a large project moves through this big pachinko machine known as the design process. I have added a link below with a project flow chart that I created a few years ago and I go back and I update it every now and then. This does not take into account the agile process, but it's a good process just to kind of make sure that you keep track of those unknown knowns or those known unknowns. It's below, it's great for freelancers, for any designers, junior designers, project managers working in a design flow. I hope that you find it helpful. If you like this sort of discussion, uh, if you work in the creative field, if you're a creative professional, I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what you do down below in the comments. Please take some time and share, like, and subscribe. Click that button over there. I am so glad that you took the time to hear this. I love sharing this information. I've learned so many things the hard way, and hopefully I am able to pave the road and make things a little easier for other professionals who are coming along the same path. I look forward to chatting with you again soon, and have a great day. Mwah.